YouTube, uh, it's Project Garage here. Um, a lot of people have asked me over the years, you know, how come you stop YouTube videos, all that sort of stuff. Um, asking if the L's still around, um, it is. But, yeah. So, the reason why I stopped YouTube, um, there's no real reason, it's just a few things of, you know, lack of time. Lots going on, life changes. So, sort of gave up, couldn't find the time to make videos anymore. Um, too flat out, uh, like constantly fixing cars and working and stuff. So, that's half the reason. But, um, yeah, the main thing is about what's going on with VL. Um, <clears throat> so far, the car's been great. Um, been turboed for five or six years now. Um, the last video I actually uploaded was four years ago and I was literally laying in bed going, there's still people commenting on my videos, so I thought, you know, may as well start again because I haven't in a long time. Uh, another thing was like my computer fucked up and, you know, that sort of just killed everything as well because I had a laptop at the time and it just couldn't edit videos. I don't have a good camera, I've always just used my mobile phone. So, I've some space off my phone, so hopefully now I can maybe do some more videos and hopefully it's a bit more smoother. Anyhow, um, the EL. So, I've had a few questions on um, a few things. Uh, what cam, people ask me. Uh, they also ask me, what ECU? They're asking me, are you dead? No, obviously not. Um, is it legal to turbo? So yeah, I've, um, EO's been going good, um, I've been, I've, you know, I've taken it to car meets, you know, big burnouts, all that sort of stuff, um, honestly it's been going strong. Since I've had it, over the 10 years, 9 years I've owned it, um, because it was actually a handy down through the family, so like my auntie used to own this car and her daughters used to learn it, how to drive and all that sort of stuff, so, um, Obviously, in the beginning of the videos, you know, they were pretty basic videos of just, like, photos and stuff. That was when I was, like, 15, 16 years old sort of thing, so, um, yeah. Uh, but basically what I did at the beginning was just, you know, what any pea plater would, eBay exhaust, you know, pod filter for all that horsepower. Um, like, I actually converted it manual, so when I was a mechanic, when I was a lot younger, as the first year, actually, it was the first car over the gearbox, and I converted it manual and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, the manuals hold up good and everything too. So that's awesome. But anyway, back to it. Um, so I'm going to try and cover what computer I'm running, um, like the, the management of fueling, um, and just a bit of a rundown of what's been going on with it. So yeah, basically. Um, I've gotten away with it turboed for about five years, five to six years, and I've been pulled over a few times and people have said, the cops have said to me, you know, like, it looks tidy and stuff and let me go. But recently what happened was, um, the cops around here where I live in New South Wales are very strict with modified cars. So what happened was I got pulled over because apparently it was too low, which I can understand, you know, they're doing their job. and. You know, it is, it is pretty low, but it's, I don't believe it's to the point where it's necessary to be pulled over for it. And they told me to open the bonnet and they sort of looked at it and said, you know, you can't have the pod filter, you can't have the catch can, you can't have the turbo. And I sort of like, well, I understand you're doing your job and all that, so sort of, you know, he was pretty good about it. He didn't defect me for it or anything. He did say he would... Um, uh, impound the vehicle if he sees it again, but he gave me a chance to engineer it and not cancel the rego on it. So basically, that's what I'm doing now, which sort of gives me the opportunity now to make a video, and I'm hopefully make more videos on it. 
basically in New South Wales, the way it works is if you turbo a vehicle that didn't come out factory turbo, for example, an EL, a Commodore, VS, anything along that lines, you need to get an engineer cert. So basically, it needs to have an emission test done. So this is gonna cover a part of people asking, can you turbo an EL? I only know for my state, because they're the only rules I study. I don't study Queensland, Victoria, any other state, so I don't know about them states. It's possible you can turbo one and get away with it. I don't know how it works up there. I know Queensland's mod plate, so it might be a bit easier to turbo it, an E-Series Falcon. Anyhow, um, basically for me now, I need to get an engineer certification done, an emission test, which I know I won't pass. Um, even though I've done everything I can, um, it's just because the fact of I need a better tune, it runs way too rich, the list goes on. <clears throat> so basically, what I've done, I've got in contact with an engineer, hoping I can get it um, passed so I can keep it on the road. So basically what I have to do there is, he said you need to put a catalytic converter in, the external waste gas to pump back to the cat. You need to put a, a second muffler because I only had one muffler. So I've done all that. It needs an air box, need to remove the catch can, need to vent the battery, all sorts of things. So I'm halfway through doing that, but what happened was I got under there and started my exhaust and I discovered rust. So that's a whole other thing again. So a few years ago, when I was driving it, I did jack it up. And I noticed on the outside of the, the seal underneath the driver's door, there was a little bit of rust. Not bad, a little bit. You, if you probably poked it, the screwdriver would go through, but not too bad. Um, but then when I got under the car about two weeks ago, I discovered I had holes in my inner seals. So what I've done there is I've had to cut them out, make new ones up, put them in, plate them, and all that sort of stuff. So I'll show you around the vehicle once, um, once I finish this little intro of what's been going on. But yeah, overall, um, it's been awesome. So this thing, I don't know if I ever mentioned it in my last videos that I did make years ago, was this thing's always had a blown head gasket. It's had um, coolant leaking around number six externally for, since I've had it. And yeah, I could put a head gasket on it and sort of stuff like that. Why not? But everyone used to say to me, oh, you, it, you know, you can't turbo a Falcon with a T5. You can't do this. You can't do that. So I sort of, you know, I said, I went, I'm like, I'm going to prove a point here. I'm just going to leave the old head gasket on it, boost it, and see how long it lasts. And to this day, it's still fine. hasn't lifted the head. It's been 10 PSI boost all the time. Um, and it hasn't been driven soft. It's been driven hard. So, yeah. So, people who say you can't turbo uh, E-Series on a T5 and you'll smash it, well, I don't know how much horsepower it makes. But it's definitely pretty quick. I'd say it definitely has 350 or more. Um, it definitely has more than 700 newton meters torque because my clutch is a 770 newton meter rated clutch and it slips sometimes. So I guess if it slips, it won't blow my gearbox. But yeah. So people who say that you can't tell they bloody any sort of single overhead cam Falcon with the T5, they're wrong. They've only heard the bads about T5s, never heard the good about T5s. So that's what happens around here. Everyone always says what's bad about something and never tell you the good things like i've had this thing for nine years manual and i've been through five diffs and i'm still in the same t5 gearbox and now it's turboed for you know many years to come on a t5 um yes i still feel a little bit worried you know when you're booting a third gear or something you can sort of hear a bit of a whine in the box but if you're not too hard on it it should be really fine to have it turboed with a t5 in it so that covers that one for everyone asking me how's it going but you do need to put a better clutch in them. Um, I've got a Mantic um, Clutch Industries bloody, no not Clutch Industries, yeah. Um, I think it was Clutch Industries Clutch um, Stage 3 button and I wouldn't wouldn't recommend it because it's a, it's a half button, half, um, it's ceramic but it's a half button, half um, standard style clutch so it's a puck and disc. It's good, so you can sort of take off. You do get a little bit of a shutter, but it's not as bad as a button clutch where it just grabs and goes. So that's sort of good, but um, it does. It just seems like it slips a little bit when you initially. You initially got to like wear it in, so you can't just get in and drive it. You got to like cruise around, or it will slip. You got to like wear that odd um, surface uh, diameter off the um, 
pucks on the clutch. So that sort of is a little bit of a thing you got to look out for as you're going to go like a puck clutch. You got to wear them in before you drive them around. Um, yeah, anything else on it? It's it hasn't really changed much. I've just had to do a few little things like it's not as loud as it used to be. There's no more streamer. Um, there's an airbox I've made up and stuff now. So um, yeah, hopefully that. We'll get it through engineering, but the main thing now is the rust. So I have to fix the rust because I don't have to, but I want to because if mine's getting engineered and two, I want to keep the car for a long time. So I'll show you a few other things. Um, my partner also done my interior for me. She's um, real handy with the fabrication of the interior where I'm not. I can't do materials and making stuff like that. She made all this really nice interior for me. So I'm going to jump out of the way of the camera now because people used to say to me you need to be more in the camera and all that sort of stuff but we'll get to the video of um, what it looks like inside and what's changed from what you would have seen at last so anyhow I'll jump around and we'll have a bit of a look rightio so here's just a bit of a walk around of it um, the paint is gone terrible as you can see I've thrown on that little stone chip guard just because the paint was so bad I thought it would disguise it a bit so that's how she's looking at the moment. It hasn't been driven in a while, so the calipers are real rust. Oh, the, sorry, the rotors are real rusty and stuff like that. But that's how she sits at the moment. I will paint this thing soon. Um, we've had to do some rust repairs and stuff, obviously. Um, a bit of rust around the side here have to fix that and all that. Anyhow, I'll go a bit of a walk around and show you what's going on. Um, I got the garnish and off of Fairmont. So I put all that on. Just looks a bit nicer. Um, took me forever to find these louvers. Re shade, whatever you want to call them. That's genuine Ford. So got them on it. Roof's really bad. We're going to paint all that soon anyway. Um, we'll go around and have a bit of a look at the interior. So what we've done here. Okay, so these are the Gear door cards that my partner has done for me. So she's done them grey top, black bottom. Um, she's put bride um, vinyl in on the doors here. So that's real nice. She's done all that. We've got the Gear door handles, the Gear trims, the Gear badges. Um, that one actually had to be repaired, but that's as best as we could do it until we can find another spear. But it sort of just keeps the character, you know, a little bit of rustic look. Anyhow, so in the car so far, still standard seats, um, as per usual. Um, we've got the wide, uh, the narrow band sensor up there. Uh, boost gauge down there. Her shifter, her gear knob. Little cover for the top of that. Um, center console. The other um, doors are all the same. She's done them all the same for me. Um, I'll open up the rear door if I can. Because we've got a bit of a rope in the way. Oh, jeez, it hasn't been open in a while, has it? Anyhow, so the rear doors are the same. Come around to this side. Obviously, but they're wind up in the back, kept it the same. Um, so she's done all them. And she actually was going to start a business doing door cards and stuff. I, I think she does a fantastic job. I'll just do mine there. They haven't been cleaned in weeks, so it's still a little bit of dust and everything on it. But she's done all the doors for me in it. I think it looks pretty good. She's painted everything really nice. Um, done all that. The rears, the roof's all done. Um, the other thing I was going to do was get the gear wood grain back half of the um, center console. But overall, that's how it turned out, and I'm really happy with it. So she's done all the doors color matching, and the reason why we did the black bottoms and the grey tops is because it matches the dash color. Theoretically, it's it's a touch go thing. Like it'd be good to have the black half of the um, the bloody glove box and everything color match black but I think just because of the way the dash is on these cars you just keep it the same sort of thing um, but the door cards do really look nice she's done a really fantastic job on that alright so 
Now we're going to cover the underbonnet side of things. Right, yeah, so I'll cover some fuel system side of things of what's going on because people have been asking me, what have you done? This and that. So don't mind the boot. It's pretty um, messy and I've been charging batteries and all sorts of stuff. So basically, batteries in the boot, that's getting tidied up. Anyhow, in the back we have a, this thing looks weathered as, you know, it's all corroded now and that sort of stuff, but it does the job. Basically, I'm running the EL Falcon standard fuel pump to run that surge tank, which fills it. So I can't remember which one does what, but one of them runs fuel to the tank, one of them returns from the rail, and one of them goes back into the tank if it's overflowing, so it doesn't pressurize the little surge tank. I've got a relay over there. Um, that's running off in parallel with the fuel pump. So whatever the ECU wants that fuel pump in the tank to do, my fuel pump here is doing the same. And then obviously this is my outlet for my rail. So there's a VT Commodore or any sort of V, v whatever, VT, V, X Commodore fuel um, filter. The only reason I've done that is because it's just push on fitting. So it tees you out with some hose clamps. So it's a Bosch A44 pump in the tank. Uh, in the surge tank, two liter, two and a half liter drop in, so that's pretty much that. Then you just run down underneath the car and tee into the fuel lines, but that's depending how you want to do it. If you want to go braid, it's all going to be different, so that's just slip on hoses and um, whatnot. Uh, injectors from TR Performance, Bosch, uh, they're Bosch. 440 cc's direct fit in same impedance so that's what i've got from them you could go bigger but it's only a single overhead cam it doesn't flow as much as a barra so keep it as that fuel reg uh, i don't know if you can see it just stock fuel pressure reg fuel lines just come up and hook up from that from my pump just retaining the standard rail all that sort of stuff standard um fuel lines so that's all that um, computer side of things, standard ELECU auto. Um, I've put a J3 chip, which OEX tuned a long time ago, but then since then we've played around a little bit to get it running better. Um, but the goal and future is, once I start tuning this J3 chip up a bit more, is to go a hoot and harness with the Barra PCM. So fine tune everything really well with that, with HP tuners or PCM editor. So. We'll do something like that in the future. But basically, that's what it is for now, and it's been good. There's a lot of love-hate on the J3. You know, they're shit. They don't work. The Half the reason they don't work is because people don't clean the chipboard properly for the chip to actually make contact to run it. So, for budget, if you can get your car running turboed, boosted for three, dollars $400, I think that's a really good plus. Drivability, it's a bit you know how it is here here and there it's it's not as smooth as anything else would be like a high-end ecu but it does the job and it works well mine hasn't blown up so it does it's, it's it does what it's supposed to do yeah it's not as fine tunable it's not as accurate but it does the job and it works for how the ecu works in an e-series falcon i'm talking elef not eb these ecus in the elefs a bit better than the ebs and eds eas but it works good for what it's got and the standard um, ECU, the way that ECU is basically programmed, it does just as good, a good enough job for what it is. If you've got the money, obviously Haltech computers, you know, you can get a link, something like that. But for a budget setup, this is all budget. Um, I think that the J3 is pretty good first um, chip to put on your ECU to get it running. So that's just my opinion. Right, yeah, so we're in the driver's wheel well now. Um, I've done a rust repair here along this um, chassis frame panel. That was all rusted, so I've repaired all that. I still have to repaint the whole inner wheel wells and stuff like that too. Um, down along here, we've got some rust in the outer seal. I'm going to cut these seals off and fully repair them at one point. But for now... Um, that's going to be as it is for now until I paint the car. So under the driver's side seal here, you can see this is my next repair. 
Um, all this here, I'm going to cut it all out and re repair it all. Um, I'll show you the side I've just done, and I've done a proper repair, not just a bit of bog. I've actually cut the section out and repaired it properly. So we'll go over that side and we'll have a bit of a look at what I've done so we can um, see the outcome. All right, so this is the outer side. So I had to repair like my lifting points. Um, they were all busted up. I've done them as best as I can. I am no panel beater by any or means, but I've done my fair share. So I had to cut the seal out and remove the spot welds. Basically, this is the finished product and this side was worse than the other side I've just shown you. So that's the finished product. Very hard to see because of the glare. But anyhow, this here was all rusted and destroyed. So basically now um, it looks nice as. You wouldn't even know it's been repaired. So that's all brand new piece of seal put in. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. And um, I'm gonna continue with the rest of the car throughout the week to get it sorted. So that's basically the rust side of things all covered. A little bit in the back wheel wells, but they're not really anything they make a video on. I'll make videos as I go along the way. Right, yeah, so the external gate used to just dump out there. So now what I've done, sorry about the rust marks, that's just from bloody um, the weather and shit we've had, even though it's stainless. Anyway, so I've um, plumbed it back, um, flexi, V-band, and back into the exhaust up here. Um, put a high flow, I think it's a 100 cell, 200 cell cat in. And it continues up here to the Reaper box, up over the diff. And then I'll go around the back and I'll show you what I've done at the rear. So the rear still looks as it was, except I've added oh, another muffler. Got to repaint that again because we, as soon as I painted it, we ended up having rain, and then that's just made it rust. So another rear muffler hot dog goes in there like that. Can't see it at really anything from the outside. So it's pretty tidy. Just sits under like that. Some new exhaust hangers have gone on. I'm going to clean everything here so it's nice and clean, and. Um, buff up the rotors and stuff like that and give them a good clean up as it hasn't been driven in a long time. So, yeah, I might give her a start up and show you how it sounds now. Right, yeah, hopefully she starts. Um, I've just put a new starter motor and stuff in it, so it should start pretty well now, if the battery's got enough in it. still hear the cam not as over the top loud and crackly um, definitely a bit more friendly for street use I guess like now the laws are way more stricter than what we used to have them like um, which is great so it's a bit of a downside you know like it's not as loud and shit like that but it definitely makes it sound more cleaner like that um, you can even hear the lifters are a bit loud because it hasn't been started in weeks but that's all right. Yeah, she definitely still sounds pretty crisp. It should be out of um, cold loop now, so.
what I mean about it running rich. EL Falcon auto doors, eh? Worth a wonder. Anyway, yeah, so basically, yeah, it runs fairly rich. I'm gonna have to pull up the tune on it on try and um pull a bit of fuel out at idle because it is a bit sooty at idle, so but it's been going strong ever since, so that's why we haven't really played with it. Anyhow, that sort of covers the video for today. Um I'll definitely make some more and get back into the swing of the YouTube video sort of things. Um yeah, I've got a lot of work to do, so I'm going to leave it at that. I've got my AU wagon over here, which I'll do in another video. But I just want to keep this specifically about what's going on. And basically, how's the EL's looking, so... Yeah. So I'm going to wrap it up for that one. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to subscribe and leave me comments so I can read them. And I'll try and answer it all as I can. And I'll make some more in-depth videos on the whole turbo side of things on Falcons and if you need a hand with tuning or anything like that just let me know and I can help you out. Thanks for that guys. Catch ya.